Today we're looking at the color sampler tool in Photoshop. First we'll go over the basics of the color sampler tool and then we'll give an example of how you can use the color sampler tool to exactly match the color of one object to another. The color sampler tool is up here in the menu bar and it is in the same area as the eyedropper tool but you may see the eyedropper tool first. So what you want to do you can hit alt or option and click on the eyedropper tool and your tool changes to the color sampler tool. I want to make sure I have the info panel displaying. Go and click on that. So with our color sampler tool, we just click and notice in the info tab, there is a one with a hashtag. So this is the information about that particular point that we clicked on with the color sampler tool. And I can keep on clicking and it makes points. And every time I do, you see it in the info panel, another numbered point with a hashtag displays and the color sampler will sample up to 10 points. So each of these points represents a pixel or a average of pixels, depending on what you choose in the sample size up here. If I choose point sample, then that point represents pixels at that one point. If I change it to three by three or five by five, that point is actually sampling in this case, a five by five area of pixels, and they're all averaged together to give me the values that you see over here. So these points, in this case, will give you the RGB values right there at that location. So hashtag one is the RGB of 254, 211, and 208. With our color sampler tool, if I am moving over the image, you can see up here at the top, these values are changing these are the real-time values as I'm moving through the image. So in real-time, up here showing the RGB values and the CMYK values. And that's what you're seeing as I'm moving across the image. I can move any of these points. So I click in the middle of the point and just drag it. I can move it anywhere I want. I can delete any of my points. If I am on point one, for instance, if I hold down the option key and I am on my point, my cursor turns to a scissors. So if I click, I will delete it. If you come over to my info tab, if I click, I can choose my color modes. I can change whatever color mode I want this to display in. If I want to choose CMYK. All these now display CMYK values. We'll work in actual color, which is RGB. If you come up here to where it says X and Y, you can change the units that you are tracking in. We'll leave this at pixels. If I want to clear all of my color sampler points at once, I can come up here to the top and where it says clear all, I just click that and all of these points will be gone. And these points are going to stay here with the image. If you save it, if you don't clear it, it's going to stay with the image the next time you come in. So that is how the color sampler works. You saw how you can create a point and you saw how each of these points tracks the values. In this case, we're tracking RGB and we're tracking a five by five average of the pixels. So each point along with the info tab is going to be key to how we're going to use it in the next example. Do me a favor, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. I appreciate it. So now we're going to use our color sampler tool in an example and we're going to match the colors exactly. What we're going to do is we're going to use the image on the left as a reference image. So we're changing clothing colors. Image on the right is our target. And we're going to get the exact match of the colors in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, all from the color sampler tool. First, what we need to do is create two blank layers. We'll call the layer on the top reference. And the layer below, we're going to call that target. First, we're going to select our target layer. And we're going to use our brush tool, B for the brush tool. And we're going to use a brush with a hardness of 100%. You can select a hard round brush and you can set your opacity and your flow to 100. And with the brush tool selected, I'm going to hit Alt or Option and sample right here. This is probably a good area for a highlight to select. And if you're not certain what areas are highlights, shadows, and midtones, you can use the curves adjustment layer as a helper for right now. Just bring up a curves adjustment layer. Click on this hand tool up here 
and as I move the eyedropper across the image, you can see on the curves, point is moving up and down depending. Now if I select over here, it's in the shadow area. Right here, it's showing somewhere in the midtones. And over here, it's up near the highlight area. So that could help you determine where to take your samples for your highlights, shadows, and midtones. So with my target layer selected, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and select right here for my highlight area. And I'm just going to paint somewhere over here my highlight. I'm going to click Alt or Option and click over here for my midtone. And I'm painting my target midtone. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Hold Alt or Option and click over here in the shadow area and paint my shadow color. So now let's get our colors for our highlights, midtones, and shadows from our reference image. I'm going to select my reference layer up here. And with my brush tool still selected, I am going to hit the Alt or Option. Turns into an eyedropper. And now I'm going to hold my mouse down. And if you look over here at the color swatch on the left hand side, it is changing the foreground color. But if I keep on holding my mouse down, and this is a tip, I can sample a color outside of Photoshop. So again, it looks like I'm sampling inside of Photoshop right now, but if I keep my mouse down, watch what happens to the color swatch as I move out of Photoshop onto the reference image on my desktop, it just changed color. So now I'm gonna select up here, which looks like a highlight, and I'll come back into my photo, and right here I'm going to paint my highlight for my reference image. I'm gonna do the same thing, hold down my mouse, Drag over outside of Photoshop and choose something like this as a midtone. Come back into Photoshop and I'm going to paint my midtone color from my reference image. I hold Alt or Option, hold my mouse down, come out of Photoshop, come over here and select somewhere over here as my shadow color. Come back into Photoshop and paint my reference shadow color right there. Any area that you are going to change a color of, say in this example here, the color over top, we're going to need to make a selection of that area. So we need to make a selection of her green top. I've already done that. I've saved the selection and load that selection back in. You can use something like the quick selection tool. And now I want to add a curves adjustment and notice with this curves adjustment right here, the mask right here is showing where her green top is selected. I'm going to make a copy of the reference layer. It's going to duplicate it here and call this reference copy and I'm going to move it down below the curves adjustment layer and I'm going to grab my color sampler over here where the eyedropper is I'm going to hold alt option and I selected it and I'm going to click on each of the reference colors there's the highlight there's the midtone and there's the shadow so on my info panel you see that I have three samples all three showing RGB is what we're sampling. And we use the five by five average up here as our sample size. Now I'm going to click on the layer thumbnail here. And so now what we're going to do, we are going to select the hand tool. And according to the RGB values of the target colors, we're going to create anchor points for the different color channels. So with RGB selected on our curves adjustment layer, select the hand tool. Come over here to our target colors. I'm gonna hold down the shift and the command key and click on each of the colors of our target colors. And what it did, if you come to the red channel, here are the three points that it created for each color. There is a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow. Same for the green, there's three points. Same for the blue. And all these points were all created at once with the RGB selected and coming over here and holding down shift and command and clicking on each one of these target colors. So this is where we're going to come into each of the channels. We're going to use the information in the info tab. And those came from the points on our color sampler right here on our reference colors. So we're going to go to each point. We're going to start off with red and you see red or point one is 239. We're going to highlight or select this point right here. You saw where the cursor changed. So that means I'm right on that point and that is a highlight. And I'm going to change that to the value of 239. Then I can either hover over the point or I can hit minus and that selected that point. 
0.2 on red, it's 180. And I'm going to change my output here to 180. And I'll go down to the third point for red, it is 90. I'll change my output to 90. And then I'll go to the green channel and I'll do the same. 0.1 for green is 183. I'll change the output to 183. Go to my next point. And for green, it's 117. And green, my last point is 48. I'll change my output to 48. And I'll speed this up a little bit. I'll do the same thing for blue. And if at any point when I was changing those and I wanted to see how the values compared, I could hold shift and click on the curves mask. And you can see that the target values and the reference values are matching up. I would shift and I will turn on my layer mask and my colors are changed. So our color sampler values in the info tab helped us to match by changing the points on the curves adjustment layer. There is my reference photo on the left outside of Photoshop and we changed the color. There's the before and there's the after. If you want more tutorials like this, click on one of the videos on the screen now. If you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe. And remember, it's never too late to learn. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.